Hello, my name is Sip Mendez. Welcome to Sip's Techie Tips. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the program editor for the Akai MPK Mini model MK3. And um, this is just a great little, little uh, keyboard here. And um, I really enjoy, enjoy uh, using it. And the editor is quite interesting because it, it, makes, it allows you to customize the uh, device just in you know, the way you want it, right? And to do special, those special things. But before we do that, I want to thank everybody who's been watching the videos, especially people that leave comments. Yes, uh, if you have a question, leave me a comment and I'll see if I can find you an answer. And I also want to thank subscribers. If you're not a subscriber, click on subscribe. And if you want to be notified of each new video, click on the bell. So, let's get started. This is the MPK Mini Editor. And the first thing we should do is get a, a little bit familiar with the layout and what it does, and then we'll do it. So, the MPK Mini uses two channels. The first channel it uses is the bed controls MIDI channel. And that's often referred to as the general channel. Right now it is set to channel one. To change channels, you click on the down arrow, and then you go up and select the channel you want to use. I'm going to change it to five. And now as you can see, it is set to five. I'm going to go ahead and set it back the way I had it, the channel 1. The other channel it uses is for the pads. And these are the drum and uh, percussion pads. And that's you, controlled by this control here. And all you have to do to change it is drop the menu. I'm going to change it to 16. And now it says 16 there. And now I'm going to put it back on channel 10. So over in the general settings, we also have eight knobs. Each little section here are the controls for one knob. So the first knob is referred to as K1. When it sends a signal, it's going to use a change code of 16 and it can send a value between 0 and 127. It can send a absolute value or a relative value. We're going to leave it on absolute. And so there's eight, eight knobs and there's eight settings. Next down here, you can uh, tell the MIDI to use the standard layout, and which is uh, using middle C as the center of the keyboard. But if you're going to be using a lot of bass notes and you're going to maybe write your bass line, you might want to change this slower. To change it, click on the down arrow. And I'm going to change it minus 2. That means it's going to start two octaves lower than middle C. And again, we'll put it back to the way we had it. Now you can go a plus or you can go minus on the octaves. Transpose means to shift the keyboard left or right a certain number of keys. Now, if for instance, if I had a singer who wants to sing in F sharp, I would have to transpose by six keys. This is middle C, so I'd have to go one, two, three, four, five, six. So I go here to transpose and I change it to six. That will change it six keys to the right. And now whenever I press C, I would get an F sharp. And I'm going to change this back to zero. Now the pads. The the device has only eight pads, but it has two banks. There is a key called bank A slash B. When it is in the uh, regular position, it 
selects bank A. And those pads are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And those use note values of 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23. And um, it shows you here what the uh, music note equivalent is. All right. Now, if you hold, if you press the uh, bank A slash B key and it lights up, then it will use um, bank B. And those are numbered the same way, 1 through 8. And it uses note values for 32 through 39. Very similar. Now there's also a um, after touch and we're gonna which means send a channel or a polyphonic which we're not gonna mess with and we'll leave that off. This section over here is for the arpeggi arpeggiator <laughs> and I'm not gonna make any changes in that at all. Also there's a joystick and this joystick can be used uh, for a couple of different things. If you move the joystick uh, up or down, then it will uh, behave like a um, pitch bender. And it has a list of things you can change. You can change it to pitch bender, single um, change code, or dual change code. We'll just leave them the way they are. The same with the uh, left and right. You can use it and assign it to a uh, a modulation or, or other effect and we will uh, leave that alone also. Now the way you normally use this is you go up to file and you retrieve the values from the device and so you would click on get and the device has eight different programs or sets of settings and you can store eight different ones. They also give you this little shortcut um, set of buttons. And you can send to the device, retrieve from the device. The number above the, each set of buttons tells you which program it's going to retrieve. So I'm going to retrieve pro program one from the device. And I click on program one and it says, the program has been successfully retrieved. And I'll say OK. And now these are the settings that are in the device. They may be different than the ones that originally came up. And then I can make my changes and I can send them back. And I can send them back to the same program or one of the other seven um, program locations. Well, I'm going to send it back to the same program. And it says, sent successfully program has been sent successfully to the device and that's good now you may want to make more than eight and in that case what you can do is you can uh, make copies on the hard drive of your computer or whatever <laughs> memory storage uh, device is on your computer nowadays uh, some don't even have hard drives. So you click on File, and you tell it to save the program. Now saving the program, again, saves to your computer. And here are the ones that were originally programmed on the uh, device. And then I'm going to make my own. So I'm going to just call it Test03 and click on save and now I have a copy on my computer. If I want to work with that copy because it's different than all the others then all I got to do is file and I tell it to open it. And I can select wherever one I want and you probably noticed that the, the values did change. Okay. And then I'm going to set it back to, ch to uh, channel 1. 
and that'll say OK. Now, up here, there is something called a program name. And this is the name that's displayed in the little uh, display on the device. And you can call it whatever you like. I'm going to call it uh, SIP PGM for program. And whenever I pull up this, this one, after I save it, of course, that will be displayed on that little display window on my MIDI. If you're having trouble with your uh, MIDI, there are some uh, diagnostic tools that might help you. If you click on Tools, and you click on the first tool, which is called MIDI Monitor, it will bring up this little window. And what this little window does is it gives you information about whatever key you press. So if I hit a C note, it'll tell me exactly what time it occurred. It said it was note 60. It came in on channel 1. It had a value of 127, so that's the maximum velocity. And then it went back to 0. Now, if I press a pad, it'll said it says that that was pad note 20 came in on channel 10 it was a value of 29 and went back to 0 okay let's uh, put it on full level i have the full level button down and it's illuminated and i'm going to press uh, a different keypad and it looks like it doubled. <laughs> it sent it twice. It said it was note 16, came in on channel 10, went to 127, which is full volume, and went back to zero. And it did it a second time. I must have uh, double tapped there. <laughs> so we'll close that. Now, there's also a uh, tool for auto populating the. Uh, the matrix of uh, pads and keys and I'm not, not going to look at we're going to skip over that we're going to go over to uh, help there's an about and about tells you the uh, the version of the program that you are using and we can close that and then if you click on help again you can open the user guide now what it's opening is a copy of the user guide that was installed when you installed the software. And um, it's a PDF file. And you can scroll through it just like a paper manual, a paper printed manual. And it's all very good. It's got links to, to start other things, to start to uh, take you to the internet for more information, registration, and product support. And, all kinds of good stuff there. A lot of nice diagrams. And so we're going to close that. And um, then to exit the program, click File and click on Exit, and you're done. Well, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you learned something. If uh, you did, give me a thumbs up. And if not, you can give me a thumbs down. That's all right, too. And uh, this really is a very nice little little MIDI. It's uh, small, compact, very sturdy. And uh, I don't have a, any sponsors. I buy these myself, and I do the research myself. So I hope you uh, ha had a good time. I want to thank everybody that... Um, if you want to leave me a comment, there's space below. If you've got a question... I'll look for an answer for you. If you're not a subscriber, click on subscribe. And if you want to be notified of each new video, remember to click on the bell. So until next time, take care.